You are listening to the Bright Life Podcast, all about ways to stay inspired, chase your dreams, and find more gratitude in the highs and lows of the journey. I'm your host, Jessica Johnson. I'm a business owner, a part-time digital nomad, a self-growth junkie, a believer in other big-hearted women, and am all about sharing tips, tricks, lessons learned, and encouragement so we can all live our biggest, brightest lives. You ready? Let's do this. Welcome back to today's conversation. Now, this is for any woman listening who is bringing something into the world, who's starting some project, whether it's a book or a podcast or a business, but you are feeling like you are either one, critiquing yourself because what you are creating isn't as good as what you're picturing in your head, or two, you just have all those nerves around beginning and actually getting started that you're kind of feeling that paralysis of overwhelm. This is such a common thing for beginning, and it's not even just for first-time beginners. Like, it's not even just for people who have never started a business before or never launched a podcast or written a book or brought anything into the world creatively. This is so the case for everyone anytime they bring something new into the world that they maybe haven't done before or they're revisiting and trying to elevate. And I was just reminded of it recently. And so I thought there have got to be some of you out there who are in this season and you're not loving what you're creating or you are too scared to even do it. And so here are some things that really help me and honestly have stood with me for the past 10 10 years throughout all kinds of projects and creations and businesses, you name it. So I really hope they help you as well. The first thing that I want to share with you, and I've referenced it before in this podcast, but it's been pivotal to my journey. I think about it all the time, is this two minute clip that you can find online by Ira Glass. I usually Google Ira Glass on beginning, and you can see this beautiful video of, for something that I think is so powerful. What he points out is that whenever you are starting something creative, there is going to be a gap between what you create in your first iteration, and what you are picturing in your head. And that actually, that's not abnormal. That doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It just means that you actually have great taste. (laughs) It means that you can tell there's a difference between where you want to go, that you can see what you want to put into the world, but you're just too much of a beginner to be able to get there yet. And that's actually okay. That actually means that your taste is solid. You're just going to have to make up that gap by doing a tremendous amount of work and reps and iterations. And I love that. I was just thinking about that because one of my goals this year is to focus a little bit more on my YouTube channel and to elevate my videos and get them feeling just really fresh and professional and well done. And Yet, when I try and make my own videos, you know, by recording in my home, it is just not what I'm picturing in my head at all. And so I'm in this gap that's so uncomfortable that maybe you can identify with as well for your situation, where it's like, I have this vision, I know what I want it to look like, and yet what I'm actually able to make with my knowledge and skills and reps at this stage is not at that level. And this is the point when most people want to give up because it's uncomfortable, it's frustrating, it's like kind of makes you not want to even put out there what you're putting out there because it's not as good as you know it can be or should be. But I really encourage you, if you are resonating with this, to keep going because I'm going to keep going as well because I know and I've seen evidence of this is the only way to create a product that one day you will be very proud of. And the only way to get to a place where you can create something like that is to do exactly what you and I are doing now, which is to learn the skills that we need to learn. And you don't know what those are until you realize it by getting into it and being like, I don't know how to do this. (laughs) Another way is to just practice and to put out a ton of work. You know, so even when I was writing my book or past blogs, the only way those blogs became 
better than they were on day one is because every day I was writing and I was practicing and I was learning new skills for building websites. And if you saw the first iterations, the first home pages of my blogs and websites, I can't even believe I put them out there. I mean, I look at them now and I'm like, I was proud of that, right, at the time. But I'm so glad I kept going because you will one day be able to bridge that gap and create something that you are really proud of and excited by. But it makes sense that you're not able to yet because it's almost like you don't know what you don't know. Um, You know, so you have to get into it. And so what you're doing now, learning the skills, figuring out what you need to know, taking the courses, asking the mentors, practicing over and over again, that is the way to get where you want to go and to put out the podcast at the level that you want or the YouTube channel or the book or the business, the website. So it's okay if what you're creating simply isn't to your taste level yet. It means you have great taste. You just need to fill in the gap to get to that point. And the only way to do that is a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of skills. And fortunately, there's really no workaround. Um, and you know, you can you can lean on others. Like I hired mentors, and I've taken courses, and I've reached out to experts to figure out what they know that I don't. And sometimes, by working with experts, you can shorten that window of learning what you need to learn. Right, Because instead of you having to go the long way to figuring it out or trying out the equipment or just testing things, you can shorten that amount of time by talking to someone who's already done it and can show you exactly how to get there faster, exactly what to use, who can maybe even help you set things up. It's just a matter of what stage you're at, what budget you're working with, how scrappy and resourceful you're going to need to be. We've all been in different seasons of that. And so there's absolutely ways to shorten that timeline. But, you know, the consistency of just putting the work out there and the reps, I think you can't get around. And so kind of just give yourself grace to go through that and permission to go through that and just be like, the, my first episode is not going to be my best episode. You know, your first video, your first book, whatever it may be, it's not going to be your best one. But gosh, it's the thing that got you going. It's the thing that actually got you on this path. And if you had never put that out there or the 50 or 100 that follow, you never would have gotten to the place that you can see with your amazing taste and vision today and that you dream of. So definitely it's worth it to get out there and to keep going. My husband recently heard this quote that he's been talking about nonstop around the house. And he's like, is it one day or day one? So whatever your thing is, it might not even be a creative project. Maybe it's a health goal. Maybe it's a trip that you're planning. Maybe it is a business or something like that. Is it one day or is it day one? We can all talk about one day we'll do this and we can picture how it's going to be that day. But really day one is the thing that gets you in the game and that gives you experience and skills and points out what you don't know so you can go learn it. And so that kind of helps me as well where it's like, okay, I can dream up and I can think about all the things, but is it still going to put it off so it's still one day? Or is it just going to be a messy, imperfect day one that still actually is more important than that dreaming and one day phase? I'll leave you with one little practical thing that you can use to, I think, help yourself get started. This always helps me because I know this beginning phase can be so overwhelming. And if you are frustrated because it's not looking how you want it to look, I think this can help. And that is... What I think about is what's one small thing that I can just be consistent with. So whether it's once a week you put out a short episode or short video, whether it's once a week you sit down at your desk for 30 minutes and you write part of your novel, whether it's putting yourself and your business on social media once a day, every weekday. Something like that that's small, that doesn't have to be perfect and it won't be, but that just gets you in motion and starts your reps and your practices, that I think makes the biggest difference for one year from now. Just the fact that you got out there every day or every week 
in a small way. That's also the key. So don't worry about overwhelming yourself. Don't burn out by doing the perfect video, the perfect logo, the perfect website. None of that matters. What actually matters is just small, consistent effort over time where you build a body of work and you get better. And then people start to recognize you for this thing. And it's like doing this amazing effort for one day is never going to amount to the same value as doing small, imperfect, but still valuable effort every day or every week for a year. So I don't know your situation, what you're creating or wanting to bring into your life, but it's kind of like a health thing too, where it's like going to the gym and maxing out for an hour for three days is never gonna be as impactful as even a 15 minute workout three days a week for a year. Which one do you think would get you better results, right? Three days of an hour or 15 minutes, three days a week for a year. Absolutely, it's the second one. And the same thing is true for any creative endeavor or business, I believe, is just that consistent effort is gonna get you there and help bridge that gap that we started talking about early in this episode. And so think about your situation, choose one thing that feels small, but feels doable, which you could be consistent with, maybe even cut it in half so it's like really doable. And then think about how often you can do that thing and maybe even cut that in half again so it feels really, really and is truly doable for you. And then just be consistent with that and give yourself a year's time. And I guarantee you what you have going a year from now, you will feel proud of You will still see areas that you can probably tweak it, but you'll have so much more knowledge and expertise and learnings and confidence that you'll know where to go and what to do faster. And you'll really have something out in the world that would have never gotten going if you just stayed waiting for perfection and stayed waiting to see what other people were doing that was even better or waiting until the technology was just right or that, you know, it just, it does not matter. What matters is your heart and your voice being out in the world, uh, you going after a goal that's important to you. And the best way to do that is to just get out there, get going, make it your day one today, and start with something small that you can be consistent with. You don't want to choose something that you can only be consistent with on your best days. You want to choose something that you can be consistent with even on your worst days. And I really think that is one of the secrets to this whole thing. All right, have a wonderful week and I will be back again next week. Thank you so much for listening in. If you love this episode, there are two things that would be so helpful to me and this podcast. One, if you haven't yet, is to leave a review. These take less than a minute, but help get this podcast into the ears of more listeners and women it can uplift. Or if you've already left a review, share this episode on Instagram and tag me at Hi Jessica Johnson so I can personally thank you and reshare. Thank you for being here and I will see you again next week.